Weather conditions play an important part in any pesticide application, not only from the evenness of the application, but also the legal requirements and the label to help minimise off-target impacts. Many product labels, including the new 24D label or the interim permits from the APVMA, require that a minimum wind speed of 3 km an hour and a maximum of 15. Now this is a daytime wind speed because the wind speed and air movement at night is very different to what it is during the day. Part of this is due to the presence of surface temperature inversion conditions. Now there's a lot of misunderstandings about inversions, but it really it just means the opposite of normal. So during the day, the normal situation is that the sun will heat up the ground and the air closest to the ground will become warm or hot. And then as you get higher up or further away, it cools. Under an inversion, it just means the opposite. The air down lower is a little bit cooler than higher up. That's because the ground will cool overnight and the air adjacent to it becomes cool. And when you get an inversion present, um, it tends to make the air behave quite differently. Often it can cut us off from the normal weather pattern winds, but the air movement under the inversion layer will be different to what it is during the day. So when we talk about 3 to 15, that's a daytime wind speed in terms of kilometres per hour. That's because the air movement during the day tends to be much more turbulent than it is at night. In other words, as it moves across the surface, it'll roll, and that helps bring droplets back down. So when you've got heat in the ground, and a bit of surface roughness or ground cover, that turbulence can start generating around the three kilometre an hour mark. But at night when the ground's cooled, you don't get the same level of turbulence. It tends to take about 11 or 12 kilometres an hour at least of wind speed before you start getting that to happen. So lower wind speeds at night tend to be laminar or parallel to the ground and that can carry droplets a long way from the sprayed field. You know, some data in a trial we did a few years ago under GRDC and CRDC funding where we compared night spraying to daytime spraying tended to show that. So the daytime application we actually measured how much was left in the air and how much deposited on the ground. And generally within three or four hundred metres the spray had all deposited. But the nighttime spray had about five times as much product remaining in the air at night compared to the daytime. And what was up in the air hadn't come down, it kept travelling off site. So when you leave droplets in the air, when you're spraying at night, particularly when there's inversion conditions, they will move very large distances and that's what makes them so dangerous. And the new 24D uh, labels and the APVA permit tend to point out some of those factors which help us identify inversions, like um, cool clear nights tend to promote them because you get back radiation, where you've got a lack of cloud cover, Often at night, things like smells will seem stronger or aromas, noises will be clearer. But one of the key drivers is that wind speed. If your wind speed drops down around sunset and picks up again in the evening, if it's not strong enough, it won't mix the air. So the label actually suggests that the wind speed should be above 11 or 12 kilometres an hour for the entire evening. And if you don't have that, you're under surface temperature inversion conditions, and that would be illegal from a spraying point of view. Some of the other things that are mentioned on the labels in terms of conditions would be wind direction, obviously needing to be away from sensitive areas. And if there are sensitive areas, it will also mention things like no spray zones or distances that you can't spray when the wind's towards those. The one thing you won't find on the label is probably the term Delta T. Now, a lot has been made in industry in recent years about Delta T, which is the difference between a wet bulb and a dry bulb thermometer temperature. Often you'll get it on a handheld weather meter where higher numbers indicate higher rates of evaporation. Now, evaporation is obviously not a good thing from a point of view from droplets, particularly smaller droplets, they will reduce in size. But when we start moving to extremely coarse or even uh, ultra coarse, evaporation is not really going to be an issue from a point of, uh, point of view of spraying. What we need to probably consider more is plant stress. So when you're thinking about conditions for spraying, always think about wind speed and daytime wind speeds don't have to be the same as ours at night. They've got to be with the label, three to 15. Nighttime wind speeds probably need to have that higher minimum wind speed to be comfortable, it's even safe for spraying. And just be aware of the wind direction being away from um, sensitive crops and following the no spray zones on the label.